the shutdown. Do you think the shutdown by the EFF that it was a success? What do you think was the strategy there? The strategy was simple. They chose the 20th of March, knowing that the 21st of March would be a public holiday. And typically, if a holiday falls on a Tuesday, South Africans don't go to work on Monday. If a holiday falls on a Thursday, South Africans don't go to work on a Friday. So the EFF knew that South Africans would not go to work on Monday because there was a holiday on Tuesday. So what did the EFF do? They announced that they would be shut down on Monday when they knew that South Africans in any case would not go to work. So they wanted to create to lie and fool South Africans. So when you see that the office next door is closed, you would think it is closed because of the EFF, <laughs> when it's actually closed because the following day was a holiday. So there was no shutdown in South Africa. By the way, I drove from Pumalanga to Gauteng on Monday, the day of the shutdown. Nothing was, was shut. The highways were working. I went to the shops. I bought what I wanted to buy. So the whole thing was a massive failure on the part of the EFF. The only success was a psychological game, which is they made people believe that there was a shutdown when actually people were simply at home because the following day was a holiday. Yeah, actually never thought about it like that, but yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, and uh, I don't know if you've, uh, you, there was an interview where you spoke about an ANC EFF coalition. You, you believe the deal has already been made between, potentially between Paul Machetile and Julius Malema. Do you think, do you still think that's the case? Yes, the EFF and Paul Mashatile have a political deal that they are going to co-govern South Africa after next year's elections. The basis of that deal is that the ANC expects not to get 50% plus one next year. So they will need a partner to assist the AA to return the ANC to power. That's why the EFF are calling for the removal of Ramaphosa. They are not calling for the removal of the ANC from government. They want Ramaphosa out. And what happens when Ramaphosa is out? Paul Machatile as the ANC's deputy president takes over. When he takes over next year, when the ANC gets below 50%, he becomes a president and Julius Malima becomes a deputy president. There was a meeting between the provincial leadership of the ANC in KZN and the national leadership of the EFF in Brownfontein, where as part of that deal, the EFF will assist the ANC fellows in KZN to go back to power because the ANC in KZN knows that they too will not get 50%. And this applies to the ANC in Gauteng as well they know they won't get 50% plus. So the deal is to get Paul as, as president, Julius as deputy, Panyaza as premier of Haute. So South Africans must wake up. If you vote the EFF, you are actually bringing back the ANC into power. And do you think that will be stable? Because it seems to me like Julius Malema wants to be the president of South Africa. He doesn't want to be just be the deputy president. So, I mean, it will be the tail chasing the dog or wagging the dog, um, if that's the right expression. Um, it, it, uh, uh, will he be able to control Julius Malema? No, he won't. You see, the strategy, by the way, uh, on the part of Julius Malema, is to ascend to the union buildings. Once he gets to the union buildings, he's not going to behave like uh, Didi Mabuza or even like Paul Masatile under Sir Ramaphosa, who's going to be told, you are going to do one, two, three, four, five. These are your responsibilities. No. Julius Malema will tell Paul Masatile and say, look, you wouldn't be president if I did not install you. So we are called governing here. Here are the portfolios I want. And Julius will mention the portfolios he wants. And he will tell Paul, stay out of these portfolios. I will run them. So effectively, if you were to have such a government, you would have two presidents. 
Julius Malema would behave as if he's a president, not a deputy president. It would be actually a very chaotic and dangerous government of South Africa. But, but I mean, if his plan is to become the president, how, how would he achieve that? I mean, how, because the, it seems to me the EFA will remain a 10% party nonetheless. So in some scenario, he has to become either the president of the ANC or get his party above the ANC percentage-wise. So what's the plan, the long-term plan, like 10, 15 years from now, if he wants to become the president of South Africa? Look, the original plan of the EFF, by the way, was that eventually the ANC is going to collapse into the EFF. That, that has been the original plan. Their strategy is that the ANC is collapsing, the EFF will rise. And by the way, if you look at trends, they are not wrong. The ANC is declining and the EFF has been rising. So if the ANC were to continue to, to fall and the EFF were to continue to rise, eventually the ANC would collapse. And their strategy, the EFF, is that it must collapse into the EFF. So that is a long-term game. Whether that will happen or not, nobody can tell accurately. You, you, we can't foretell the, the future. But one thing for sure, if you were to have a government of Paul Mashatile as president and Julius Malema as deputy president, the EFF would have achieved a lot in such an arrangement because they can actually call the shots, even if they were to have 10% or to get into the union buildings through 10%, they would be king makers. In other words, Paul Mashatile wouldn't be king without having been made by the EFF. So they are sitting in a comfortable position in relation to dynamics in the ANC. Um, I don't know if you saw, um, it, it was up uploaded yesterday, France Cronier's um interview on business we lay out the latest poll numbers and he would disagree with you that the anc is falling and the eff is on the rise the latest poll numbers he has is the a the eff is close to six percent that they have dropped and the anc is back up to 52 percent he says it's likely that the anc will get above 50 percent in his opinion in 2024 and the eff has reached the ceiling and has now drops. What do you think of that? No, that's not the only poll, by the way. So uh, <laughs> uh, his word is not the word, the word of God. There are other polls. By the way, the ANC conducted its own poll. And the poll says the ANC is going to get 37%. And it says the EFF will get 10%. It says the DA will get 27%. And so on and so forth. So uh, the poll that you are talking about is not the final word. Whether it disagrees or agrees with me, it's neither here nor there. The jury is still out. All experts I have listened to, all polls I have had access to, except the one you are mentioning, suggest that the ANC will not get 50% plus. By the way, I agree with all of those who have made such a prediction, because even the ANC, by the way, they think that they will not get 50% plus. So it looks like the poll you are suggesting, is you are talking about, is very generous. Uh, I'm sure that the ANC would, 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 would be very happy to listen to such an analyst. Prince, what do you think of the, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, the Ramakopas, um, the surname, the, the three Ramakopas that have now joined um, the, the ANC top seven and the cabinet? What do you know of this family? Are they significant? What do you think of them? Look, they are very influential in Tswane, in the politics of Tswane. If you track them, their brother, the minister of uh, electricity, was mayor of Tswane. So they have been influential in the politics of the capital city of South Africa, number one. Number two, they have projected themselves as people who have technical expertise. I am not sure if they do, by the way, because I can't, I can't show you evidence of their results. Look at Tswane, for example, under Kotsienzo. Tswane continued to decline, even in terms of electoral outcomes for the ANC, number one. 
Number two, it was never the best run city in South Africa. It continued to, uh, to show decline under him. So they are influential and they managed to infiltrate the ANC and they have projected themselves as smart and people who are skilled. But in my view, these are people who are simply duping the ANC and duping the public. Interesting. So you think the new Minister of Energy won't accomplish anything significant before 2024? No, absolutely nothing. I mean, you can't build one power station. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> South Africa's problems, we know them, of, of ESCOM. One, we have a fleet of old power stations that need to be replaced because they keep on breaking down. He can't build a power station in a year. That's bottom line. Number two, since it took over, right, load shedding has been continuing. It will continue. So he's just a smart guy with a sweet tongue who is going to produce absolutely nothing. Interesting. Well, awesome. Thank you, Prince. This has been fascinating. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.